Yeah, um, KMC is happy to have uh, Hannah Rebecca, a former resident of Japan and English teacher, um, back in Japan <laughs> virtually. <laughs> um, and uh, she'll be talking about focusing on touring and networking in Japan. So, uh, Hannah, please feel free to begin. All right. Okay, just a moment. I'm just going to share. All right. Um, Thank you very much for having me, Dwayne and KMC. Um, okay, so I am Hannah Rebecca. That's what I go by when I perform. Um, I'm an American indie folk singer-songwriter, and uh, I perform solo, um, and I used to live in Japan. And um, okay, so basically during this, I wanna focus on different types of venues that you can play at and my experience playing at different places and how I went about it and um, answering any questions that you might have. But I do just wanna, I do just wanna talk about briefly, like, you know, I perform solo. Uh, when I lived in Japan, I was a resident, so that definitely had a, you know, that impacts how you're gonna be able to um, get shows and stuff as well. Um, and I guess I would wanna ask, uh, who was here for the first, for Dwayne's um, webinar? Were you guys all here? Yep, I was here. You were here, okay. I think I saw it, I was in person. Oh, you saw it though, video. okay. And Esteban, how about you? Not me. Okay, sure. so sure. in, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> so in his webinar, he talked a lot about um, how important learning Japanese is and how important um, networking and community and building relationships is. And I just think that that is so, so true. And so I just want to start that off by emphasizing that. And then I also want to just ask um, for you guys, do you perform solo? Do you have a group? Um, what is your situation? Well, I play in a trio. A trio, okay. I I usually go with bands. I'm a, like more a, like a tour manager for bands, and I work like going to Asia with Latin American bands. Oh, cool! Nice. Yeah, I play too, but but uh, I'm not. I haven't played in Japan. Okay. Okay. Cool. And what about you, Stephen? I perform as a soloist, but I also do collaborations with other people. Primarily, though, more on the solo side. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, and the reason that I asked that is just because I know like if you're coming from another country and especially if you have more than one person and you have equipment, I know that there's visas to deal with and there's a lot more logistics that go into that. So just please keep that in mind as I go through this presentation. Okay. Um, and then if you have questions about it after, we can definitely talk about it. Um, so let's see. Let's get going. So um, basically... Um, so I lived in Japan from 2009 to 2013, and then I also went back in 2018, and I was able to play a festival, um, a show at like a cafe, and then at a music bar. And when I lived there the first time, I didn't start playing until the third year that I was there. So the last two years, I played a lot. Um, and those first two years, I was really, you know, building community and learning Japanese and all that kind of stuff. Um, and so when I went back in 2018, um, it was a lot easier. I didn't plan anything actually, you know, people that I knew just said, Hey, we're having, you know, we're having this festival. Do you want to play? Or I, my friend has this cafe. Do you want to come play? It was that kind of a deal. Um, I was just actually there to see friends and then ended up playing three shows. So that was rad. Um, but that's just to, you know, emphasize how important relationships are. But I feel like that's also true, like everywhere you go, you know, so um, even more so in Japan. So um, that said, let me just move on into different venues and stuff, because that's what we want to focus on. Um, Rebecca, do you mind if I ask a question really quick? Sure. Oh, you can call me Hannah. Oh, Hannah, yeah. Rebecca. I'm sorry. No, no, no. That's um, okay. That's okay. You can just call me Hannah. Yeah. 
Hannah. Okay, good deal. Hannah, thank you. Uh, yeah. As far as like the learning Japanese goes, I mean, you had that privilege to live there for multiple years in a row. And so sure. obviously you're able to learn. But I mean, I would say, I think uh, Dwayne has also said, you know, I think the Japanese people appreciate it very much when you're trying to communicate in their, you know, in their mother tongue. So I'd just be kind of wondering what would be kind of some of the basics maybe for those who you can't really learn to speak fluently, what would be kind of some of the bare basics that we should maybe know how to speak in Japanese? As far as like asking directions or just thanking our audiences or just introducing ourselves, things like this. Yeah, totally. The, the things that you would guess would be important. Those are the things that are going to be important. Okay. So um, at the end, there's I'll have there's a reference to uh, it's that um, it's actually the ebook that Dwayne wrote. It has like basic Japanese phrases in it. So there's that in there. But things you would want to know are like. Um, uh, yeah, introducing yourself, you would want to know how to say like, yoroshiku onegaishimasu, that's just like, you know, let's all have a good time together, here we go, we're starting, let's take care of each other sort of thing. Um, talking about the songs, maybe just saying this is my next song. Um, again, yeah, thanking your audience, all of those things are super important. And if you're trying, absolutely people will 100% be on board with you. Um, never had any issues that way but what will be easier is like booking shows um dealing with logistics all that kind of stuff so the more you can learn the better um and then if you wanted to focus specifically on that kind of language i mean i would just look for books that are you know that are geared towards that i would look for a book and then i would also look for um like a an on an online teacher like you can use sites like italki um I don't know if you've ever heard of, have you heard of italki? But, I have not heard of Is <laughs> I went I-T-A-L-K-Y. How do you spell that? An I at the end, I-T-A-L-K-I. Um, okay, and you cool. can find different, you can find different language teachers or just like volunteers. I've done Spanish exchange with people before trying to learn Spanish. <laughs> and, but yeah, they have it for Japanese as well. Um, some people charge a fee, some people do it as an exchange. Um, and if you were like, hey, this is, these are the kinds of things I wanna learn, you could find somebody to help you with that. But I would focus okay, on you. all those logistic things, logistics things, awesome. yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Anna, I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Um, okay, so uh, I'm gonna move this over here. Okay, so we're, let's just start with small venues. So we've got bars, cafes, music bars, open mics. Um, I'm gonna go like this. Okay, so now I can't see your faces, but <laughs> at least I can see the screen here. Okay, so um, these are a few places. I lived in Nagasaki Prefecture. I lived in a small town called Matsura, um, but mostly when I was playing the first time around, well, mostly for the most part, I focused on Nagasaki Prefecture, Saga Prefecture, and Fukuoka Prefecture, and those are all in Kyushu, um, and playing all kinds of places and events down there. Um, these are some examples. And so what I did when I first started was uh, in this middle one here, this is Crazy Horse Cafe. It's in Nagasaki City. It's a live house cafe bar, music bar place. And what I did was I just went inside and I asked them like, do you have music here? When is it? That kind of thing. And she told me, and that's how I like learned the word for performing <laughs> and stuff like that. Um, and you can go in there and they've got instruments and you can just, you know, um, they, they like you to play music and that's what it's for. So that's those kinds of things. And also open mics are a great way to um, start building community and just, um, you know, meet other musicians. And then from there you can get shows. I know that that is, it's so weird not being able to see people's faces. So I'm going to go like this again. Um, it, I know that that's hard if you're not in Japan currently, um, but we can talk about that more. Um, but I'll just tell you how this worked. So um, this other place over here on the right, this is Payala Cafe. This is in Ikitsuki. Ikitsuki is an island off of an island off of the top of Nagasaki Prefecture. Um, it's a super cool music cafe bar place. Um, there are lots of these cool places all over the country. So I mean, this yes is focused on Nagasaki Prefecture, but they are everywhere. Um, so um, I've included some links and stuff, but so basically this Payala Cafe, I had heard that they did open mics at the last Saturday of every month. So I went up and that's how I started playing in Japan. I played at Payala Cafe um, and then Crazy Horse as well. And from there, you know, I made friends with the people that were there. They hung out there all the time and would start doing shows there. Um, 
Yeah, basically. And so this here is the summer festival that they have every year up there. Um, and this was probably my second year playing shows or something. Uh, and those are, that's anyway, it doesn't matter. But anyway, so basically you play the open mic just like anywhere else. You meet other musicians. They tell you what's going on. You know, I basically do this everywhere I go. Cause right now I'm a house sitter. I was saying this before. Um, it works everywhere <laughs> so far in my experience, but, um, you know, go to open mics, meet some musicians, and then you have some shows. And that's what my, that's been my go-to. Uh, so those are those I've also included links because all of these places are still up and running. They survived COVID they're there. So if you did want to go to Nagasaki, here's some places you can play. <laughs> okay. Um, in for Payala Cafe, the owner is Kazumasa Matsuo, and I believe he still owns it. Um, there's another woman who's been posting a lot about it, but I believe he's still the owner. He's this like long haired hippie dude, super cool, really awesome place. Um, I don't know the name of the owner for Crazy Horse, but it's still there in Nagasaki. They don't have a website. They just have their, they just have their address and their phone number online, but you can go there. It's like on the main drag in Nagasaki city. Um, over here, these ones on the left, this is, this was actually in 2018. So when I came back, I went to third base cafe. This is in Tabira, which is just, it's like an hour north of Sasebo, which is in Nagasaki Prefecture. It's a coffee shop and bar. Um, it seems, so this gentleman here is one of the owners. Um, and then this woman, Megumi, on all of their like Facebook and uh, Instagram and stuff, she seems to be the person who's like running things or promoting things. So that would be the person. If you, if you wanted to go there, that would be the person to get in touch with. Um, and then there's another place, Torike Music Cafe. This is in Omara. This is another music cafe bar. They, it's one of these places where they have um, lots of uh, instruments already there. They encourage people to play. Uh, it's, it's open and going. Um, and so these two places I played at, and they, they, I was just invited by friends, basically. My friend was friends with this guy. Um, and so, and then I actually, what they ended up doing is, um, you know, they took like a donation. They did like a pass the hat at the end. And, you know, it's, it's a, I mean, it was like $170 at the end of the night American, which is not bad for, for me, you know? Uh, and so uh, another thing that was, that uh, Dwayne talked about in his webinar, which I appreciated and think is important to recognize. I mean, we're all musicians. We all know how it goes. We're all independent musicians. I think, I don't know actually, but but um, it's hard to make money, right? And so um, your first time going through, it's probably gonna be really tough to make money. I wouldn't expect to. Um, it just depends like what your goals are for, um, for, your, for your time in Japan, maybe your second time through or something, but I know that Dwayne said it's hard to make money. So just, just wanna be realistic with our expectations here. Um, so, Bars, cafes, music bars, open mics. Yes. So those are these small venues. Let's keep going. Oh my God. <laughs> we have so much to cover. Okay. Okay. Um, just a second. There we go. Okay. Here's another thing you can do. So this is renting out a venue. This was when I, I did not know how the system worked in Japan. Uh, Dwayne talked about it in his webinar, you know, the live house system and um, how you know, it's basically like paying a bunch of money up front, renting out a venue. They provide all of the equipment, but you fill up the place, charge tickets. And if you make any money at the end, that's what you do. This is not, not super easy, you know, or, or maybe it's more like it evolves this upfront charge, you know, so there's more of a risk involved. But what happened was, Again, what I do when I go into a city is if I see a place that looks like they play music, I walk in. I can give you a share link to this FYI so that you have these links and stuff. Okay. <laughs> what I do is I go into a city. If I see a place that has music, I walk in and I ask them, you know, how do you play here? What's the deal? <laughs> you know? And so I saw this place. It doesn't look like much on the outside, but they have live music. And the woman who owns it and runs it, she was like, yeah, you know, there's this upfront charge. It's not, this is in Sasebo, which is a bigger city in Nagasaki. It's one of the bigger cities, but it, it's not like Tokyo or Osaka or something. And the fee was much less. I don't remember how much it was. I want to say it was like $300, 
which, you know, is it's way more in Tokyo and Osaka and places like that. Um, I can't remember how much it was. It could have been 300, could have been five. But what I do know is I was like, okay, no problem. Now I had this network because I was a an English teacher. So it's basically this built-in network, you know, where you've got English teachers all over the prefecture and you can build that network pretty easily or not, I shouldn't say easily, but if you join, you know, a million, there are Facebook groups, there are all kinds of groups, there are meetup groups um, for like expats in Japan. Like if, if that's how you're starting, if you, you know, you want to speak to English speakers or whatever, or musicians in Japan, and then you can find Japanese musicians as well. Um, I know that Facebook is not huge in Japan with Japanese people, but with the expats, at least you would be able to, they would be able to help point you in the right directions. Um, so that said, uh, what we did was we rented out the venue. This was actually my birthday party. <laughs> and we rented out the venue and we invited everybody. And, and we, uh, we put together like five or six acts. Um, and then everybody played 20 to 30 minutes. This is generally how a live house show goes. We charge 10, $10, you know, a thousand yen at the door. And we had enough money left over that each performer got 20 bucks. So it was, it ended up being all right. Um, however, I do recognize how difficult that is if you don't have a built-in network. And this was definitely like, you used the right word before. It's definitely a privilege to be able to have done this, you know? Um, so other things you would want to ask is what equipment is provided or included, you know, how do we deal with sound? Uh, what, uh, when you're talking about the hours that you get the venue for, is that including setup and takedown, all the kinds of things that I think are pretty common sense that you would want to just keep in mind. This place is still doing shows, by the way. Uh, it's right there in Nagasaki. You can go there. <laughs> so there's the link for that. Um, this, I think, is the only one that I actually ever rented out a live house venue. Um, because after that, what we ended up doing was putting on our own events. And once you have that community, it just, it's, it's difficult at first to build, but once you build, it can snowball um, or it becomes easier and easier, you know? Um, so what I would say, or what happened then was, you know, we, we would put on these big events like once every two months. And now for some, if you're coming from outside of Japan, I understand that you don't have two months to spend in Japan, but just to give you an idea of what's possible, um, we would put on a big event. It would be similar to the one at, in Sasebo. Um, we did it in Omura, we did it in Nagasaki City. Um, those were basically the two places, um, Sasebo as well. This one, this one on the left is in Sasebo, this one on the right is in Omura. Um, and we ended after that first one we were able to get more japanese artists you know so we would have a mix of like japanese artists and um international artists at one of the shows i think it was this one on the left actually a really renowned guitarist came and played which was wild um his name's naoki joe uh and anyhow uh we ended up not having to pay a fee i don't and it was basically because of relationships again so for this one on the right this was called katabami cafe they closed a few years ago just they were a family-run business and they were all growing up and having families and they decided to do other things but um one of the one of the guys who would perform with us was local to the area and so he um you know they they uh let us come in and we didn't have an upfront cost we packed the place full of people you know everybody bought drinks and had a great time food and all of that and so it didn't cost us anything we all had a great event um and the venue also made money so that was a really win-win sort of situation and that's what we ended up doing for a lot of these things so like the one on the left these ones happened this was at a place that was called Rojiku, and then and then it changed to Vooks. And then now they have, now they've closed because of the pandemic. Um, but the guy who owned this place, he had like rental spaces. And so that's how I knew him. So I originally, um, went to Sasebo. They have rental spaces. Cause if you live in apartments, you know, it's so hard to play music. Um, and so I would rent out one of these rooms and practice and whatever. Um, it was like $5 an hour, which was awesome. I don't think it's probably, I don't know how much it is now, but anyway. Um, and so this guy, he had a lot of different venues. And so he invited us 
uh, to play shows, it was the same sort of thing. It was like a win-win situation. This is more of just like a bar atmosphere. You know, it was the same sort of thing. Um, so putting on your own events, we've, you know, we found it to be very successful. Um, it was definitely easier if you had the, the network and a, a, an actual like live house, all of this equipment was there. We didn't have to bring anything, right? So a lot of these venues have closed. This one, Monkey Wrench, it's, and there's no picture here, but this is in Nagasaki City. They recently closed there. They didn't close, but they were moving location. And uh, this, this Instagram, Good Beer Only, their latest post is like pretty recently. And they're talking about they're going to let everybody know where their new location is. Monkey Wrench was awesome. The owners are really cool. Um, that's a great place as well. Uh, what else here? Okay. One other note about putting out events. It does not have to be at a live house. So I have done it at other places. Um, when I left Japan, I put on a going away show in the library. This was not easy, but you know, it, there was like a $40 fee, but you have things like you have to think more about who's bringing in sound, how, who's got the equipment, all of that stuff. It's just like, you know, basically renting out a space. And then you're, you know, there's a lot more logistics and planning. Um, we put on a giant event in a school gym. It was a fundraiser for the, for the earthquake and tsunami. Um, you know, I think a lot of that had to do with what it was for, but I'm just trying to say that there are other options. And then there was also like multi-purpose buildings. So a lot of these small towns, um, the town that I lived in had a place called Furusatokan and a lot of towns have this, and it's like this town or it's this, uh, excuse me, this building that has like local produce and local goods made by local artists and local, 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 you know, it's awesome. Right. And so there was this multi-purpose building right by that. And so, yeah, you can rent it out and, um, you just want to, you generally can talk to like the city hall. Maybe, um, I know in the town that I lived in, uh, the, in the city hall, there's like an international relations department. So if you contact a small town city hall and you go to the international relations department, you might be able to talk with them about setting up like a cultural event. You know, you could frame it as that kind of a thing. Um, so this also totally works. We did something for Christmas there. So next. But I just also want to, yeah, oh, it doesn't matter. Okay, we'll go, we'll keep going. So live house tour. So this is something that I did when I left. It was 2013, that was eight years ago. Okay, uh, so I'm not going to say that I know what it's like now, although I was there three years ago. So, you know, that was cool. I, I, that was still very similar to what I remember, but um, I also wasn't playing live houses three years ago. So, you know. Um, just keep that in mind. Okay. So what I did here was I decided I wanted to do a tour and I was going to do it myself. Looking back, I'm like, what was I thinking? But it worked out, you know? Um, so what I did was I was going to, I was leaving in July and I wanted to do the tour in July, August, like the month of August. Um, in February, I was going up to visit a friend in Kobe. And so I thought, well, while I'm there, I'm going to look for a live house. And I have some references at the end. So there are links at the end to show you like what to Google. Here are some lists of live houses, that kind of thing. So that's in here. Um, so what I did was I looked for live houses. I found one, this one called Backbeat. Unfortunately, it's closed now, but all the other ones are still open. Um, I called them up. And I said, hey, I'm, this, I'm an American singer-songwriter. I've been playing shows in Saga and, Kyo, and uh, Fukuoka and, and Nagasaki for the last couple years. I'm going to be in Kobe on this date. Do you happen to have anybody, like an event already happening that I could just open for someone? And they said, oh, well, you know, that's, we don't really do like openers because I didn't know this really at the time, you know, and they were like, it's not, we don't really do that. But what we do have is an event with like five or six bands and you can just be one of them. And I was like, okay, I couldn't believe it, you know? And, uh, and I said, well, that's great. Thank you so much. And I hung up the phone and that was that. And I'm not saying that it's that easy because I think that that's quite unusual. Um, and you know, it obviously helped that I could speak Japanese, but then it also obviously helps that you're like, you know, it being like a novelty foreigner is also a thing, right? And so 
but you're all, you'll all be novelty foreigners. So I don't know. Um, I think it would have not been so easy for a Japanese band to call up and do that, you know? Um, so just recognizing that for what it is. Um, so what happened was I went up there, I played this show, then I came back. Now I had a relationship with this, with this live house. You know, I went out to dinner after with like the owner and his friend. And then, um, when I was planning my tour, I sent him an email. And so what I did the second time was I sent out a bunch of emails. I found them when I was going through for this presentation, they're still in my email. So if you're wondering, I can send you an email and you can just copy and paste it out some of the information <laughs> in Japanese. Um, and anyhow, and so some of these places, I basically just cold emailed. Now I know that in like in Dwayne's presentation and he's completely right, you know, and a lot of this really does have to do with relationships, but it's, it, I just gonna say it's not impossible. And maybe this was true eight years ago and it's not now. You know, I just want to keep that in mind, but I would say, um, just ask, I don't know there there's, you know, there's, uh, nothing wrong with that. Um, there is a way to do it. You know, you don't just, you don't just write up and say, Hey, what's up, blah, blah, blah. Can I play there? But, um, there's kind of like a, you know, hi, how are you? How are you doing? Um, have you seen the leaves change lately? The weather is nice, <laughs> you know, like um, these kinds of intros to emails. Anyway, I'm, I'm getting a little bit off topic. <laughs> so uh, what I wanted to say was, yes, so I would, I would email. I basically, I booked around this date, you know, so I had this one date um, in mind. And so I wanted to book around, you know, in these cities, Kobe, Kyoto, Nara, Osaka, Tokyo. And what I had planned to do was hitchhike up. Um, not because I had to or anything, but just because I never had. And so I thought, oh, that would be exciting. And so I'll hitchhike up. It'll be a whole thing. Um, and uh, and that's, that's what happened. So a lot of them got back in touch with me um, and I'll go through them on the next slide. And, uh, and I was able to do that. Um, and I was very, very surprised by how easy this was. The other thing I should say is, um, yeah, down here it says no fees or ticket requirements because, um, yeah, in Dwayne's webinar, he talks about how a lot of times at these live bars or these live houses, you're expected to sell a certain amount of tickets or bring a certain amount of people. But because I was coming from out of town, they just waived it. They didn't, and they already had the event set. I was just basically joining on and um, they were like, yeah, don't worry about it. I'm not saying that will work. I'm just saying that it did. Um, so yeah. And then Twitter. Okay. This is not my Twitter handle anymore, but this is about when I started using Twitter <laughs> when, and it was super useful. I know that Dwayne's talked about that before, um, Twitter in Japan, um, being a way of communicating. And that's what I did throughout, you know, when you're doing these shows, you meet like five or six other bands. They won't be the same genre as you. There was like, there were like punk bands, metal bands, um, all girl bands. It was not something that would happen in the U S but there was just the way that it was there. And it was great. And so when I played at Nara, for example, this guy, KSK, he played in a band that was like a hard rock band. And, um, he was like, yeah, all right. Well, I'm from Saitama. They were on their tour. He is like, when you come up towards Tokyo, I'll set up a show and we'll play up there. And so I got to add that date at the end of the tour. Um, and that's just to show that you know, keeping in touch with everybody that you meet. It's so important. Um, and, and fun. It's just super fun, you know, um, which I, it just feels very natural. I think, um, it doesn't need to be contrived or anything like that. It's just taking an interest in people and what they're doing. Um, cool. Uh, so let's see. So here are some of the venues. I just included them because why not? I think I would want to know. <laughs> so, um, and then I also have another sheet at the end with lists, extensive lists. So, um, this one I played, this was a live house, not a Neverland. Um, this is their information page here. Um, if you have your computer set, it'll automatically translate it to English so you can figure it out, you know? So that's the, brilliance of Google Translate. It's not always great, but you'll get the point. Um, and they'll always have like the, on their information page, like what you have to do. A lot of these live houses, it's 
insane. Like it'll be like, oh, it costs fourteen hundred dollars to rent out this venue. So what I would do is just contact them and 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 ask what's possible. Um, and if you, especially if you're coming and you say, oh, I'm on this tour, I'm doing this and that, it's you know, and explain your story. Um, or, and also maybe like your link to Japan, that would be good as well. Uh, here at the Osaka show, this is uh, brand new. It's still there as well. They actually have a contact page in English. Some of these places are really excited to have foreign um, acts. This, uh, this was one of them. Um, they have a Twitter as well. This place was great. Um, I don't remember why, but I didn't have a place to stay for some reason. And one of the per one of the people working there let me stay at her house that night. You know, it's just a vibe. She doesn't work there anymore, but but it's just a cool vibe. The owner was really great. Um, in Kyoto, this coffee house, this place I played, um, I think I contacted them. Uh, and what they what their policy is, is you can send them like a, like a live demo. They don't want a CD. They want something live. And then they'll listen to it and decide if they want you to play there. And at that time, I didn't have anything, by the way, when I was sending out these emails. I had just started playing, basically. And... Uh, you know, two years before, I didn't have any CDs. I didn't have any, I didn't have anything there. I don't even know if Spotify existed. Like there was nothing, you know, I, I, in my emails to these people said, I don't have anything, but I can send you, I can send you a live video of me practicing and playing. Um, I'm sure that's different now, but the, these people still are asking for like a live demo. Um, and so I went and just played the open mic. I think they, I think I might've applied and they said, why don't you come by for the open mic, which I can understand why they did. Um, but it's a really, really neat place. Uh, they say it's the Japan's oldest live house. I don't know if that's just something that they say, or if they count it that way because it's an old sake brewery, um, and they're counting that history. Um, but yeah, it's a pretty neat, pretty neat thing. Um. Okay, Saitama, this was easy going. So that's where the guy set up the show. Tokyo Ruby Room, this is cool as well because of this, of this open mic that they have. They have it every Tuesday and you can reserve a time. So it's not like if it's your first time there, you can reserve this time. You can show up at this time. And then if they like you, you can try to book a show for the weekend or for an upcoming weekend. Um, I would like get in touch with them ahead of time and say, I'm going to be there. What would, you know, I, I'd like to reserve this spot, but then also like what, you know, what's the possibility for a future weekend slot? Um, yeah, I do recommend this. This is, I think that's really cool. Uh, you don't have, you know, cause you know that it will happen and then you know that there's a possibility for a future show. So, um, okay. So those slides, I feel like those are like the most interesting, <laughs> um, but I just do want to show you a few other things of what's possible. Um, Local Hannah, festivals. I'm really sorry. Can I ask, oh, can I ask yeah. one real quick question before I forget about the previous slide? Yeah, sure. Really quickly. The, uh, the places that you show those venues, do they oftentimes have kind of what, what I would refer to as like a built in audience? In other words, people that kind of, you know, regularly patronize the establishment. So they might show up because they're locals or do you, are you pretty much responsible for trying to recruit your own audience or doing some sort of advertising or, you know, connections like that? Yeah. Great question. Um, Basically, they want every band to bring people, right? But it, in this case with me, they did not expect me to bring people because I was coming from far away. But but basically, there was a built-in audience because there were five or six acts and every band brought people. So in every show, there were people there. One of these places, though, it was like, I think it might have been the Sake House. I think it was there where they, they said on their site, like, we don't require, maybe it was, I think I might've even written it. We don't require any tickets. We don't require you to bring people. We just want you to, you know, promote your show, tell people that you know about it, you know? So, um, you know, just like, uh, just like you would expect a venue, they want you to promote the show and they'll promote the show and, and you guys just hope for the best. <laughs> But yes, there will be people there to watch you. It's just that they're not necessarily going to be, there were not people there who were like, I'm here to see some indie folk singer songwriter. You know, they weren't, <laughs> so, but they were still right. interested. It, they were still interested, which is the cool part about it. So, um, okay. So I hope that answers you. your question. Definitely. All I right. appreciate it. All right. No problem. Okay. So another thing to not forget 
which I think this is actually a really good idea as well, local festivals. There are so many festivals in every place all year long. Okay. So for me, I, I would, okay. So I ended up playing local type festivals because people had started to know that I was playing music. However, you can look these all up. And so I wouldn't ignore these because they always have music there. There's, it's always a fun atmosphere. Um, and I think that it would be like, for a lot of these local festivals, it's like a cool thing. Like, oh, this person from this other country wants to play at our festival. How neat is that? You know, and then they can put that in there, like international artists, whoever, you know? So it might be, a this is, you know, it might be a little, more difficult as far as the, just as far as the communication goes. But if you can just send an email and find out about it, I think it's worth um, trying for. So for example, this is uh, in Sasebo. No, this is not a great picture because they were doing some construction, but it's in the arcade in Sasebo. And it was like an American town festival. There's a Navy base there, that's why. And so, you know, they that day it was like playing the arcade. And then what you can't see is there's a park and a stage in a different area and then you play there um when i went back in 2018 they had the look they had the they have this big festival up on the mountain in the town that i lived in um to celebrate the azaleas in the spring there's like tons of stuff like that and so my partner and i we played we played at this festival it was awesome um summer is festival season but they have them all year round um in nagasaki prefecture in the fall they have okunchi festivals they're like harvest festivals it's so cool every little town has one. Here are some really good lists. So uh, this Walker Plus site is great. It has live houses, music bars, music cafes, and event lists. Um, and you can find them in any town around or any area around Japan, which I think is amazing. Um, and then for example, if you Google this, so this right here is just the town name of the tiny little town I lived in. I mean, tiny, okay? It was like 10,000 people in the main part, and then maybe 30,000 people spread out over a giant area. And then this is Matsuri, which is festival, and this is He, which is day, so it's like Matsuri no Matsuri no He, which is, which you can Google, and then um, just change out the city, for example, Nagasaki no Matsuri no Hi. And if you click on these links, which I'll give you the share for this so that you can do that, um, you'll be surprised at how many festivals a tiny town has all year long. And then for Nagasaki, and I mean, for, for a big city, it's there's just so many. So I think this is a really great way to meet a lot of people. It might even be better if you can do it than uh, live houses because you don't have to worry about tickets or money. Um, and there's a lot of different kinds of people who are, all the local people are going to come to these festivals. So it's my two cents about that. Okay. Charity events and fundraisers. I think that this is um, something that's you're more likely to be asked to do if people know who you are and you're local to the community or like, your friend of a friend of a friend is going to ask you to come to their charity event, for example. Some of them can be quite large. Um, in uh, in Saga, for example, um, they had like one event every Christmas. They had a Christmas event. There'd be 500 people there. So, you know, it, it's just something to keep in mind. Um, this is harder to do, though, I think, if you're not already part of a community. Oh, my God. Okay, I'm almost done. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, just a second. Hopefully it's loading to the next page. Come on. Come on, come on. Oh, no. Oh, did that work? All right. I think this is it. Contests and other events. Just random little local events uh, happen all the time besides the festivals. Also contests. I don't think are as common, but something to just keep an eye out for. So for example, this guy Kokujin Star Tanjo, this is like a talent show in Fukuoka. This is at the JR station, which is the main tra train station. And at the top, they have this giant hall with a giant, with a big stage. It was packed. There's like, I don't know how many people, 500 people there, I think. Um, which 
is a lot, <laughs> okay? I don't know about you guys, but for me, I was like, wow, this is pretty cool. Um, you had to apply to play. I didn't win. My friend did, but I didn't, but <laughs> that's fine. Uh, and then they had like a talent show. So Guy Kokajin is like, is foreigner. It was like, here's a talent show of the foreigners. Guys, come watch. And people did. Um, I, not sure if they still have it, but but you can you could Google it and see. Um, the, these are just examples just to show you like what kind of odd things can happen. This R&B group, Cool MB, came to my town and I opened for them. I don't know why, we, you know, but it was awesome. We did a we did a song together. Um, as you can see, I fit in really well, uh, but, <laughs> no, but like this was at the cultural center. So every town will have what's called a Bunka Kaikan and that's your cultural center or a lot of towns anyway, will have one um, and they'll have events there. So you can also get in touch with those people. I probably should have written that down, but I can put it in the chat. Um, you know, there's like local music and movie night and where they want to have things. So just like all kinds of things. And again, this is another thing where maybe this was where the town was putting it on, you know, but maybe you can put on something like this if you wanted to. Um, you don't have to wait for somebody to ask you. Uh, okay. And then a note about busking and street performing. Totally possible. Um, I do think that you have to be careful with your visa. Um, Technically, so I was a resident, but I, but technically I was not supposed to be collecting money. I never busked for money. However, I did make friends with somebody who's a professional street performer. He's Japanese though. And he has been doing it for, I, God knows how long, like eight years full time, just traveling up and down Japan, living his best life, posting gorgeous pictures and playing on the street. And he just does it acoustic. Um, he really focuses on where he's going. So he does like izakayas, karaoke places late at night, uh, starting at night and doing it till early in the morning, like three, sometimes 4 a.m. And that's when he works. And people, it's surprising, but people will definitely, he makes a good living doing it. Um, you don't have to worry about um, like being perfect or anything like that, people will just be like, oh, do you know whatever song? And he'll just pull it up on his phone, sing the chorus, and they're super happy because they're just having a great time. Um, I think you do have to be careful about restricted areas, amplification, anything like that. I would just be careful, um, but I do think it's possible, but use caution. I, Dwayne I, might I, know more about that. Yeah, I'd like to add one thing in there. Generally, sure. Uh, especially in Osaka, I've talked to police officers and they personally say that busking, I don't want to say it's illegal, but pretty much you need a permit. Um, so if, if you do want to busk or we want to find out, uh, you do need to first check with the police and get a permit. And the main reason for that is they don't want crowds around the person who's performing and those crowds are blocking other pedestrians for com from coming through. So that that's the main logic there. Awesome. Thank you for adding that. Because <laughs> again, this is something that I haven't done. I've just seen a Japanese person do it. Um, so yeah, great. Thank you. Um, yeah. And then this is the last slide. Let me just move this over here. Um, here's some things you can Google. Oh, is this in the way? I'll go like that. Okay. So music cafes, music bars, live houses, open mics, and festivals. I tried to color code it, but it's like, this is just katakana. So it's just like, use a city, put in these things, just copy and paste. And then you should find some lists that come up. Um, and then here are some lists. It's that same Walker Plus, only because I looked and it was pretty awesome. This was a really extensive list. So live houses and for events, Kanto, Kansai. Kanto, you know, is a, the Tokyo area, Kansai, Kyoto, Osaka, Nara. Um, Kyushu, Shikoku. Shikoku, I think only, or maybe it was Hokkaido, only had like three So <laughs> on this list, but, um, and then festivals and events. And then also um, some other resources. Because it is a little bit more difficult if you are coming and you have a limited time, you know, what I would recommend is trying to, yeah, use Twitter, use Google, 
get in touch with um, Japanese art before you come. Uh, we're building up your Japanese, etc. Uh, especially if you're going to have limited time, which I realize I recognize is like the reality for all of us probably. Um, but then I know this service exists. This is Dwayne's service actually, but he'll introduce you to somebody, to a Japanese artist who's like in your same genre. And then what you do is you introduce each other and then you mutually promote one another. So it's like a it's like a win-win sort of situation. And I think this is really useful, especially, like I said, if you have limited time, if you don't know where to begin, or if you're having trouble locating Japanese artists in your genre. Um, and then also they do tour bookings. So this is again, like if you're with all the logistics that can go into it, if you, you know, if you want to hire somebody to like take care of that for you, and there's just, if you go on the site, it says everything that they'll do. And so it's like train things, restaurants, like getting to the venue, coordinating with the, with the owner of the venue, coordinating with the other bands, helping you talk to people afterwards, like figuring out like how much, uh, like tickets and money and merch and all of that stuff. Um, transportation, um, that you can find here. And then again, and this I think is really important, the useful Japanese phrases and info on performing in Japan. And that is just, that's a link to the book there. I mean, I can't stress how much Japanese will help you. <laughs> it does not have to be perfect. My Japanese has gotten really bad over the last few years since I left, but I'd still, I can still communicate. It's totally fine, but I'm just aware of how bad it is. <laughs> like comparatively, you know, um, but it's completely fine. People, like you said before, Stephen, they, you know, they appreciate you really making the effort. And so, um, so yeah, but if I was going to go now, if I was going to plan a tour, I would certainly absolutely brush up on my Japanese. Um, and I also like, for example, for the actual performance in, uh, September, oh my God, it's almost September, uh, here in a few weeks at the conference. Um, like I'm asking my friend, you know, how, I'm just like confirming, like, is this how I would say this? Is this how I would say that? You know, like, this is the song. This is what it's about. Just making sure that I don't sound like a, you know, like a first grader, but, but it's okay. Really, if you do, you know, like, I think people just, like you said, appreciate the communication. So, okay. All right. Do you have any questions? And you and had then, another question, I, I think? Yeah, I, can I just have a follow-up to really quickly? Um, the yeah. places you were talking about, it sounds like some really good options. Thanks for kind of sharing all of your, your wisdom gained over time. Um, I was just wondering, you know, <laughs> most of those, it seems like, are more kind of geared perhaps to like people that have their own portable instruments, like yourself, who can take your your guitar, ukulele, or whatever, and, and, and carry it with you. For someone like who's a, a keyboardist, I'm not sure if many of these places actually supply keyboards or if there are even some sort of jazz clubs, what have you, that might even have a piano already there in the place. Is that common or is it pretty much just an empty stage with amplifiers and sound boards? That's a great question. Um, I did not include jazz bars in here and that is because I never played at one because I'm not a jazz musician, um, but they totally exist. And I think, Dwayne, I think you talked about them in your presentation as well. Um, and then, so yeah, so if you're playing keyboard, like a lot of the live houses will have sound systems. You would have to ask if they have a keyboard. And sometimes on their website, it lists all the equipment that they have included. And so, but you know, you would probably want to bring it with you, I would say, you well, know, and yeah, generally um, even Japanese musicians, they don't want to carry keyboards and keyboard stands on the train and most transportation is done on the train. So um, yeah, if you generally, you can look at the venue's website and they will list what equipment they have. Um, if you have an established relationship with the owner, you can mention, oh, you know, I'm coming from overseas. Would you be able to get me a keyboard or, you know, could I rent one fairly inexpensively? So yeah, it's fairly easy to, to, to get one. But if they already That's have it in, in house, so to speak, if they already have it on the stage, are you allowed to just use that as part of your, your gig there? Or do you actually have to pay an additional rental fee to do that? Do you know? Usually, usually there's no rental fee. For jazz, jazz venues don't 
don't have a rental fee. But yeah, that's why they have them on the stage for musicians to use. Yeah, and like um, some of these music bars will have keyboards, like the one in Omara, that Tori K one that I put, like they had a keyboard, I believe. It, yeah, if you just ask, but yeah, there's no fee. They're like, that's the, that's the nice part about it. You can just be like, oh, great. They're like, have fun. <laughs> They'll have drums, a lot of them, you know, it's cool. Any other questions? No, it was interesting to hear all your adventures. Well, I hope that it's at least useful as far as like what's possible for venues, you know, yeah. to play at. Um, just because... It's hard, I know as well, like coming from another country, especially if you're trying to plan a tour and you're trying to plan it for like a week or two weeks or something like that. So if I was going to do it, I would try to, I would try to like go on Facebook groups, meetup groups, um, other, I don't know. I would look online for like expat groups, Japanese musicians, all kinds of stuff and try to build up and Twitter. I would use Twitter to find um like venues other musicians etc but or i would just use these lists and then call up all those venues and say like hey what's up coming through can i jump on your bill that kind of thing also you're hitchhiking i was intrigued by that because i mean i guess the culture is very different because like in the united states i mean there's sort of like the the danger of hitchhiking would be very real but you found this the culture you also mentioned like gigging and stuff and busking can be very safe I mean, is it Jap Japanese uh, culture is very safe, low crime rate is what you're trying to say. Super, super, super safe. Um, okay. I've had Japanese people tell me that that is changing in the last 10 years. Okay. However, I think comparatively, it's extremely safe. I would say I felt comfortable hitchhiking in Japan because we were in Japan, because it was Japan. Uh, I had a lot of people try to convince me not to. They were all Japanese. Um, and all my teachers at my school, they tried to put together money so that I would just take the train. And I was like, I just, you know, like they were very concerned for me. But they, it was, there was nothing to be concerned about. It was totally fine. Yeah. I had a friend, she, she, this I think explains it. She, uh, a, a single woman, she walked through, she walked eight miles through Tokyo in the middle of the night, one night on her own, on a walk. I can't remember why, but in, by herself at night in the middle of the, of Tokyo, you know, like, yeah, it's just safe. <laughs> Wouldn't recommend that in Chicago or, or New York, for example, so. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, I mean, yeah, I don't know. Cool. Thank you. I mean, okay, nobody has guns, it's, it's, you know? No one, no one has guns. I mean, watch out for knives, but <laughs> yeah. Very eye-opening. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, no worries. I, w I wanted to add something that uh, for me, uh, it has been really helpful is just to, con well, it depends on the country, of course, but, but, uh, but one of the good contacts there is, is start with the embassy of their if if they have a cultural attache or something like that uh, it's a good thing because they can connect you with more people and actually uh, i'm from chile but uh, through the embassy we have been uh, able to book shows uh, or connect with cultural centers or even with some small venues and so that's also if you are starting to do something that is an important thing like to have in mind that's yeah that's such a good idea i remember mm -hmm. i think it was it the meet and greet that we were talking about that i've never done that before but i think that's awesome right. yeah, yeah sounds super uh, useful yeah that's one that, that's a good point the um, Spain, uh, Spain, Spanish embassy, uh, Portugal. Oh no, no, um, uh, Spain, uh, because it's uh, Institute Cervantes. Cervantes, yes. yeah. They actually have yeah. a venue in their building that they put uh, on uh, concerts. We have played there like five times, maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, That's awesome. It, yeah, yeah, and actually, it's a it's a nice place. It's like two hundred people. Uh, it's in sent well Tokyo is huge but it's uh, in a really good location and it's a it's a really opportunity and also it's, 
uh, yes, Instituto Cervantes is uh, from is from Spain, but also I'm from Chile. Uh, uh, but it's an important uh, place for every uh, Spanish speaking community. So they book uh, activities not only with Spanish, like from Spain people, but also if you're from I don't know from Mexico or if you have a proposal like in. Uh, like a joint thing with, uh, I don't know, if you are from the States, but also you are like, you have like a, a connection with, a, I don't know, with an Argentinian musician or something like that, you can book that kind of things too. That's awesome. So, so the, where else have you performed or booked people to perform? In well, in... I had uh, some similar experiences as you, not all of them, of course, but uh, for example, uh, it has happened to us that some of the shows are, they are like already booked and, and, and they have like a slot and they put one of our bands there. So no fees and, and even you can get some money sometimes. Uh, that's a normal experience. We also have like a couple of, people that they can book shows, but, but it's kind of the same. Uh, but this thing with the embassy and also with the universities have, have been good, especially, if, I don't know, sometimes you are, go, you are going with a band and the band is not only playing. It's good that the band is, has the, like, the ability not only to play, but also to do some workshops um, or some other activities that can be, uh, I don't know, booked in a university. Or the last time I was in Japan, it was two years ago. Uh, we were with a band and also we, we played in, like, in a couple of universities, like doing workshops about I don't know, some style of music uh, or some instruments uh, or something like that. So that was like to have more... Uh, a more packed schedule there and and to have more more opportunities to play or more opportunities to uh, i don't know meet people or or whatever uh, that was a good opportunity i was going to ask you yeah. so when you when you would book the concerts at, or the workshops at the university who would you contact for that would you contact like the actual you know administration at the university or would you go straight for like the music department of the university who would you reach out to well, we had a couple of opportunities, like we, for example, we play in, in, in Nansan University at Nagoya, and, and we had a, like a Chilean a professor there that they have like a, a Latin American center. So, so they like arrange something and they pay, I don't know, the, the tickets, uh, they pay the like accommodation, things like that. Uh, and we have a, a, yeah, an activity there. And uh, also, uh, I don't know, in, in Tokyo University, there was a group of, of students that they have a, like a, a, a group about certain types of music. So we can we did something like that with the U University of Tokyo. So it was kind of that, uh, but also I, I think it, it was a huge thing to have the embassy, uh, to have a person like uh, the cultural attache at the, uni uh, at the embassy. We had luck at that time that she was a real, uh, she was an amazing girl that was really into that. N not always is the same scenario, but in that case was a really good, really really good help so she contacted us with people at the universities to like uh, so, book stuff well hannah and hannah and duane i think duane you might have even mentioned in a previous sort of uh sort of meeting that the american embassy isn't particularly helpful or supportive i mean is that true yeah that's or, i don't know hannah have you worked with the american embassy at all or are you, hannah are you from the united no, states I or from did. canada I, I didn't catch that i'm from the u.s <laughs> okay cool. i'm from wisconsin all right, so, I'm just wondering if they are actually helpful or have connections, Dwayne, like yeah, in, I, in, in yeah, Japan. Yeah, I, I, I don't want to paint it in a negative light, but it's just in general, the American culture doesn't really have interest in exporting American culture to other countries because it's already done through movies and other, <laughs> as opposed to, for example, Chile or Brazilian culture. Or Canada. Very much, right. They're very, Canada supports. They're very much interested in you know educating people about their culture and other things so for that reason there's not really that much interest got it okay 
but I guess it wouldn't help. I mean, it wouldn't hurt to contact the embassy and, and just see kind of what their options are. There might be, they might have someone like, like Esteban says, that's very helpful and supportive of that. And all you need is like one, one really enthusiastic one person. person in the embassy to try to make something right. happen. Right. Yeah. I love the university idea. I think that's great because there's so many and then you could probably find so many clubs or maybe like international clubs or. Um... The, I think not only in Japan, in Asia, there's a lot of like small groups of people that they are trying to, I don't know, to understand or to connect more with a specific culture. Uh, they have different, is every country like, uh, I don't know, China or Japan, they are huge countries in their population. So there is like a, a space for almost everything. So there are some people that is trying to push and, and to understand and to learn about something. So, uh, yeah, I, I think it's, uh, there are things, but sometimes it's really difficult to, uh, to, I don't know, to reach that, those people to know that something is happening, but maybe you, you can have some, uh, and you say it's, uh, about the expats, uh, that's very important. I, I think they can connect you because they are like, uh, uh, it's not only the network, but also, I, I don't know, they know more about the, the things that are happening. I don't know. Yeah. And also, like, what you're saying about um, uh, small groups of people, like, that's also with the, with the city halls and, like, any town that might have an international relations department. Um, because, like, ours... Like in the town that I lived in, and this existed in other towns as well, like they would put on, on all kinds of events. You could also look for like sister cities, like any town that has like an American sister city or maybe from Texas or wherever, you know, <laughs> like you could look for that kind of thing. Um, I know that the town that I lived in, they were sister cities with a town in Australia. And so they would have Australian events all the time. Um, so finding stuff like that uh, is another good way. Yeah. You just gotta find those those that yeah it's the small group of like ten people <laughs> in the yeah. in the city. When you um, Esteban, when you book people your bands in Japan, how long do you go for? Well, that's a good question. Um, usually, well, we because it's a really really long trip. We usually from Chile we go to the states and then it's a ten hours flight, uh, ten hours flight from Chile to the states and then to the from the states to Japan is twelve or something like that. Uh, so it's a huge uh, flight. Uh, we, we usually try to be there not like three days, uh, but also uh, usually we go not only to Japan. We are going to China or we are going to South Korea. So. Usually we are in Japan about uh, seven or 10 days, but we need two days to adjust to the time difference and that kind of things. Uh, yeah, it, that's a, I think it's a very important thing uh, because, well, Japan is, is kind of expensive. Uh, Tokyo is way more expensive, so you have to be aware of that too. So... You cannot stay there, but but the only the, the other thing that is good about Japan is it, it doesn't matter. For example, in other countries, you ha you have to book only uh, on Friday or on Saturday uh, because that's when people is going to the shows. But in Japan, there are activities almost every day, so a, a Sunday or a, even a Monday can be a good day if you have the proper uh, support. That's a really good point. Yeah, uh, we have shows a uh, uh, Sunday at a really weird time, like at two p.m., and people show up. So it's it's, it's different. It, it's really different. What's your experience um, financially? Like, are you able to break even? Do you ever make any money? Do you gener is it generally like for promotion? What are your goals when you go? It's very difficult. To also, uh, we have all the. We haven't made a lot of money, but sometimes we uh, we had the opportunity to make. But but you have to consider something. In some 
countries, not in the States, but for example, in Canada, in Chile, in Colombia, in many countries in Europe also, they have a support. They support like tour, international touring, like they the government can support you with uh, flight tickets. Uh, there's other organizations that can uh, give you money to have a per diem to cover some expenses. So you can apply for that. Uh, and also, yeah, it helps you a lot with the cost. Uh, but it's normal. It's, a good goal is to break even. Uh, uh, you have to be, uh, you said that in your presentation, you have to be uh, aware of, about the expectations because in Asia in general, uh, you're not going to make it like, uh, it's not, there is no such thing as fortune or something like that. It's very difficult and you have to, if you want to do some, you have to plan and, and, and know that you are investing at, at least at the first stages. Nice. I didn't know that about like essentially grant money for foreign artists yeah. or international oh, yeah. artists. Yeah. It's, awesome. That's Australia, very important. Australia, Canada, Chile, so many countries, European countries. And, and as I mentioned, it's about <laughs> exporting their culture. The musicians that play Canadian music represent Canadian culture. So the Canadian government sending them to an Asian country to perform as long as you know they're on their best behavior, <laughs> then they're representing Canadian culture. There is an an, uh, an event in South Korea. South Korea also is huge in this. Well, they have the the K-pop uh, in, in industry. That's another thing. But but also they have this program. Yeah, they they, they make like uh, international festivals apply for money to get an artist from South Korea in their festival. Uh, I've done that before, and that's another way that many countries like uh, try to promote their uh, offer uh, of music or bands or like culture. And also, they have a pro uh, a program that they invite a, a music a, a, I don't know festival directors to go to Korea and see a music, uh, Korean bands to try to book them in their festivals or things like that. So there's a lot of things happening about exportation of music in, in many countries. The, the states, uh, as you said, about, they, they have already done like that exportation with the, I don't know, Hollywood movies and all the huge bands. So for a small acts, maybe it's kind of dif it's difficult, but in, the, in, in many other countries, it's uh, they are trying to yeah, show their music abroad. So we have that kind of support. It's, I mean, it's horrible from, for like, for, for the majority of artists from the States that they don't have like this program because they're, or oh, this kind of programs, but I don't know. Yeah, this doesn't really well, it's, it's also, it's a huge, also it's a huge country here, you know, and so there's a lot of places to perform. So yeah, there is that flip side to the coin. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. Mm -hmm. I will try that. Yeah, and you I'm, have like, oh, I'm sorry, Swedish. go ahead. I'm Swedish and I will try the Swedish embassy. I have lived there for 20, 20 years, but I will try. Good, good, good uh, idea. Yeah. I, I think it's a it's a it's a good thing just to try and, right. uh, and as we say maybe there is this person that is really into uh, and even is maybe well I had for example I, I met people from the embassy of the states in China and they were really into music and trying to do things and uh, but of course it's like it's not their job. But, but sometimes you, you can uh, meet with people that has a, a special interest in, in some music and they want to try to bring a band or something like that. And maybe you can have, you, you have to check if, if, because maybe you can have 
some uh, a really good opportunity and you don't know. Exactly. All right, uh, Hannah, I'd say go ahead and wrap, wrap up for now. Okay, that's it. <laughs> thank you guys so much. Uh, this was really interesting. Esteban, thank you for um, all of your input and answering all those questions and talking about your experience as well. Oh, that was awesome. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for your presentation. It's really useful. And, and it's always amazing to know more ex like different experience in Japan is, it's huge. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's really good to talk with you all. That's, I think the point of this whole conference, I think. Right. So <laughs> that's great. Good. Thank you, Hannah. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Dwayne. Thank you very thank much you for setting yeah. this up. Yeah, thank, thank you, you everybody KMC. for Yeah, joining. thanks, Dwayne, for doing all that. Appreciate it. Yeah.